welcome back to the top five scariest lost episodes ever. Part three. <laughs> there are still creepy pastas, and there are always creepy pastas all the time, right, guys? Yeah, because every time we make one of these videos, like part three, part two, part one. We always get five different ones, right? Yeah. And then the PBS last episode scary logos right here. Put them in. Okay. Okay. And let's there it is. That blue thing. Right there. Let's just begin already. Okay. Number five. Gregory's room. Now this isn't too scary, but it's better to do the less creepy story first. So this creepy pasta starts off with the narrator telling us he has a cheerful life. One great part about his childhood is watching TV cartoons in the 90s. He had a dream of becoming a cartoon tester, and soon his parents found out. One afternoon, they took him to the Nickelodeon headquarters to possibly see what job he can have in the future. The narrator and a few other kids sat in a big room, waiting for someone to enter the room and tell them what to do. Eventually, a staff member came out of nowhere, and he held a CD for a new cartoon. He told the kids that Nickelodeon was going to make a new series on Nick Jr., and the kids cheered. So this staff member puts a CD in the DVD. DVD player and then leaves the room after saying he'll come back later. The TV went to a static screen and then showed a fireplace burning. We see the whole room and there's no music at all. We then see a chair facing the window towards the night sky. There's a bald head on the chair and it slowly turns as it stares at the camera with a creepy and realistic face. He begins to talk to the viewer and says that this is Gregory and this is his room. He tells the viewer that we will have fun, just the two of us. Gregory kept saying that it was just the two of us, no parents, no police, and then he says that nobody can hear us. There's distorted background music as his face gets closer and closer, and then flames start to appear on the screen. Gregory tells the viewer that he needs love, and then the episode ends with the paralyzed face all over the screen. But no matter what we do, it will just be the two of us, alone in this room. Just me and you, no parents, no police. No one can hear you. Embrace me. I need love. Then the staff member came back in and all the kids were crying uncontrollably at the horrifying sight. This next story is seriously messed up. There's no footage or pictures of this, so bear with me as I just use normal pictures from the show. Number four. The Magic School Bus last episode which begins with the origin story of the Magic School Bus. It was supposed to be a line of horror stories for kids, with three being shown in each episode. This is a similar concept to Goosebumps, and it's much different than what the Magic School Bus actually became. In the episode, the school children were brought onto a school bus, which didn't have eyes at the time. The bus turned into a spaceship, and they went into space, where strange stuff began to happen. Miss Frizzle explains that there's an override lock on the ship, so nobody can leave until it has reached its destination. She says that they are hurtling towards the sun, and then she jokingly says that she could turn off the airlock and suffocate everyone. She laughs it off, and then suggests everyone should go into forced sleep. She says that there are nine stasis beds, but eleven people including herself. Arnold must stay up while everyone goes into stasis sleep, but then he has a weird talk with Miss Frizzle. She says that there were originally 30 students in the class, but 20 of them died. She then says she is going into the upper airlock where there is a separate bed. It'll take two years to get back home instead of six months like she said earlier, so everyone has to wait longer. Now this is where the story takes an extremely dark turn. Arnold is staying up alone while everyone is asleep, but he doesn't have enough food to survive. We see a montage of time passing and Arnold's looking nervous and hungry. Arnold yells out to Miss Frizzle that she didn't give him enough food, but then she ominously says, Oh, but Arnold, I did. The camera pans towards all the sleeping bodies of the other Magic School Bus students, and then the voice of Miss Frizzle says, Eat them. Arnold soon made the horrible realization that Miss Frizzle hadn't put them into stasis. She euthanized them. After he made this realization, he noticed a scalpel appearing near the door. He took it and cut into Phoebe's belly, slicing her open and eating her lungs and intestines. He peels and eats her skin, then moves on to the face as he slices off her eyebrows and the nose. For the next month, he picks on the remains of Phoebe. But then there's another time lapse and Arnold has begun to hit puberty. He has nibbled on the ears of all the students except his cousin Janet. The scalpel appears again and he decides who to eat next. Carlos is the unfortunate 
and victim and is sliced open. Over time, Arnold keeps eating his fellow students as the days pass and he has nothing else to eat. The episode ends with him slicing his own neck with the scalpel and killing himself. Now since the magic school bus one was so terrifying, I'm gonna be ending this video off with one of the funnier Lost episodes. And when I say funny, I mean it's so bad it's funny. So if you were scared by the last two, hopefully this final story will lighten the mood a bit. It begins with a Cartoon Network intern tripping on the floor and finding a VHS tape. It said Foster's home for imaginary friends- No, Beverly! Foster and his friends. Home imaginary friends. Home imaginary friends. Last episode. Well, this one is nervous, but I mean, George is nervous because he. I don't like scary stuff. Yeah. Well, let's just get on. This guy took the tape home and played the episode. It started with an intro that looked wrong and completely unfinished. The name of the episode was The Death of Mac, and already this seemed odd. Mac runs to Foster's home for imaginary friends, and then Blue opens the door. He says in an oddly deep voice, Hi Mac, there's something I need to tell you. Then Mac says in a slightly demonic voice, What do you need to tell me? Blue whispers to Mac, then Blue yells that Mac's life is his and pulls out a gun, shooting Mac in the gut. Somehow Mac is still alive as he says, how could you? And Blue yells, because I can! Shooting Mac again, killing him. This guy turns blood red and then Blue goes around Foster's killing everybody. He sticks a chainsaw on Frankie's stomach which kills her instantly. Blue shouts, sweet dreams Frankie and begins to laugh. Blue transforms into a demon. The episode ends and the credits roll. Outside of the TV, the VCR explodes. Anyway, that's all for this. Number two. Happy Appy. Happy Appy was an old show that was apparently broadcasted on Nick Jr. before being abruptly taken off the air very quickly, due to some episodes of the show taking dark turns. The show depicted a clay apple, Happy Appy, helping children with injuries. After a while, he developed a death stare by staring directly into the camera at the viewer. He also began violently killing children, all implied and happening off screen. One episode even depicted two planes crashing into two large towers, implied to be the World Trade Centers. When Rubble hit a child, and the others tried to help, Appy led them away from the scene, claiming, That's natural, children. The strange part was, the episode aired years before 9-11. What seemed to be an innocent yet rather morbid children's show in the beginning soon turns into something much bigger and more terrifying as the author comes in contact with the show's director, Forensic. Something about this show was not right at all. Number one! You came back the builder. It was a rainy night. Otamu and Amaya were having dinner in the living room. One could see drops of water falling from a leak in the roof. A drop of water hits the floor. Amaya complained to Otamu that he had promised to fix the leak. I'll get to it, but first I have to eat this dumpling, Otamu replied. Otamu, please, his wife said. Hey, you're the one making delicious food, he joked, and they both laughed while eating. The laughter got silenced by a menacing wind that swept through the house. They both stood in terror as an enormous shadow appeared in the doorway. Atumu, with a broken voice, asked if he could help the visitor with anything. The shadow remained motionless. Another drop of water fell from the hole in the ceiling. We got a second look at the shadow and recognized that it is the hideous version of Bob the Builder. His face was obese and wrinkled. His left hand was skinny and his fingers were claws. The right hand was a deformed mass in which he held his hammer. He then slowly looked at the leak and turned his gaze to the couple. Bob, without saying a word, hit the floor with his hammer a couple of times. Amaya sought shelter behind his husband. Atumu filled with courage and told Bob, Listen, you're not welcome here, so please leave my home. With a very deep voice, Bob replied, Can we fix it? Atumu didn't understand what he was talking about. Bob took a step forward and asked the same question. Can we fix it? Amaya begged her husband to make him leave. Suddenly, 
Bob's head fell off to the ground, and his neck stretched like a huge, disgusting worm. Bob hammered the floor twice, just before a drop of water fell next to his head. They both jumped, frightened, as they saw Bob's monstrous neck grow bigger and bigger. They ran away as Bob's repulsive neck began to chase them. Optimu and Amaya hid in one of the rooms and closed the door. What is that thing? Amaya said. With his stomach in his throat, Otomu tried to calm her down. Shh, shh, I'm not sure. Bob's shadow peeked out from under the door. They tried to not make any noise. An unsettling silence took over the house. Until, Bob's hammering could be heard in the distance. The hammering started to get closer. Bob said, With his stomach in his throat, Otomu tried to calm her down. Shh, shh, I'm not sure. Bob's shadow peeked out from under Leave us, evil spirit! Bob's shadow came back to the door. A second went by, and Bob's monstrous body came in and slammed the door. It was huge, and his veins sprouted from his neck. The couple looked tiny compared to that beast. Bob pushed Adamu to the wall and left him unconscious. He then grabbed Amaya and left the room. Adamu quickly woke up from the hit and screamed, Let go of her! With his arm broken and bloody, he walked as best as he could to the door of the house. He yelled at the top of his lungs for his wife as he cried. Show yourself, coward! He kept screaming. Bob peeked through the door. Adamu didn't hesitate and asked him furiously where his wife was. Bob's head fell off again, and he wiggled around Adamu while making a slimy, squishy sound with every move. He got near Adamu's ear and whispered, How can a man take care of his family if he can't even take care of his home? Bob then lifted his finger and placed a brown slimy glue on the hole in the ceiling. Bob pulled himself together back to his deformed body and ended up saying, You can't fix this. He levitated and got lost in the trees. That's how Adamu was left beaten, bleeding, and alone. A few days went by. Adamu looked tired, and the ceiling was still leaking. He then started talking. Every day I break something else in this empty house, but he still never comes for me to give me the same fate as my beloved Amaya. Wow. Awesome story, right? Let's give it up for me. Oh, whoa. Awesome. Scary story, right? Subscribe for more videos and request them. Bye-bye. <laughs> See you on the next video. Bye-bye. <laughs> And remember, comment down below. And like and subscribe. Bye.